Uh, friends, uh, good evening to all of you. It is, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, engineer Muthraman, R.K. Muthraman, who is uh, HOD Aerospace Engineering in uh, Periyar Manima Institute of uh, Science and Technology. He is a BG, B graduate from, uh, in Aeronautical Engineering from uh, PSN, uh, PSN College of Engineering, uh, Tinnavelli. He did his MBA uh, in Airline and Airport Management and uh, Manon Manyam Sundanar University. He did his ME in uh, Satyabama University, Chennai. And he is pursuing his PhD in uh, Periyar Manyam Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, he is a graduate member in the Aeronautical Society of India, life member of Indian Society for Technical Education, he is an associate member in our institution of engineers. He is a regional member of uh, institution of aeronautics, astronautics and aviation. And currently is an assistant professor and uh, head of department uh, in Perrier Mani <coughs> He has uh, guided a number of uh, graduate students for their projects. He has visited uh, various industries and institutions uh, <clears throat> in pursuit of his uh, projects. His areas of specialization of aerodynamics, fluid mechanics, wind tunnel techniques, flight dynamics, and UAVs. He has published a uh, number of papers in uh, various uh, journals. Few of them are role of UAV, uh, UAV in life saving, published in the Global Journal for Research Analysis listed and indexed with the international uh, ISN directory, character study of uh, Jatropa and uh, cardinal uh, biodiesel blends, fluctuation assay on dirigible using indigenous material, etc. He has uh, won awarded uh, awards like uh, best assistant professor of the year at uh, International Education Symposium in, uh, in the year 2019. He has been awarded Indian Aerofest uh, Faculty Leader Award by Institute of Aeronautical and Astronom Astronomics and Aviation. Awarded Best Teaching Staff 2016 by Periyar Maniam Institute of uh, Science and Technology. He has organized uh, and worked as a co-convener in the National Level Symposium Griffin II, conducted in uh, 2011. He has gu guided quite a number of R&D uh, students. With this brief introduction, I request uh, Engineer uh, Muthraman to take over. Engineer Muthraman, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Samdha, sir, for your uh, invitation to IEA uh, Trichy Local Chapter. And I thank uh, IEA Chairman, uh, Chairperson, the honorary secretary and the past immediate past chairmen for uh, giving me an opportunity to share my experience or maybe my views about the flow visualization techniques. Uh, I'm just going to speak about the flow visualization uh, techniques today. So this is a normal one uh, we used to see in everywhere uh, because uh, here today I'm just going to tell about an overview because uh, everywhere we can have air or maybe we can see the liquids like water, air or maybe gases. But with our NAC day, we can't able to see how the flow is going to, uh, is going to over, uh, passing over an object. We can tell uh, air at this particular speed, it's me and it's going, going uh, towards my behind. But we should, uh, we should, we should in a capability of telling that, uh, at which speed it uh, touched me, and it, at which, which speed it has exited me. So all those things we can able to do, uh, but with our NAC day, we can't able to visualize it. We can experience it, but we can't able to visualize it. So some formulations has been made and uh, some experimental methods has been made to visualize those flows also in high speed regimes and also in low speed regimes. So those methods are called as flow visualization techniques. So these methods only I'm just going to uh, tell you uh, today. So before entering into it, uh, we all know about uh, the fluid dynamics. The concept of today's, uh, today's topic is begin the fluid dynamics. Topic. So in my contents of today, 
we are going to speak about uh, i'm just going to tell about types of flows i'm just going to recall it the types of flows the types of fluid flow lines uh, we know about the steam lines and path lines and we are going to study about the steak lines also and the flow visualization what is exactly the flow visualization why we need that flow visualization to be done and uh, what are the methods of flow visualization that is the techniques of flow visualization and in that we are going to study about uh, smoke flow visualization duct flow visualization and uh, some optical flow methods also actually uh, in nowadays in modern era we have some softwares like cfd many analytical softwares are there like uh, hypermesh all the softwares we have with that we can able to analyze and we can design and we can analyze the flow pattern over the object but in the earlier days we doesn't have that kind of that kind of software and all so uh, think of the earlier stages for example i am from an uh, aeronautical background so i am just telling taking an example as aircraft so right brothers they have uh, made the first successful flight in 1903 uh, december 17 and uh, before that they they made some several attempts to make that to fly on air so hope we know about it uh the right brothers they are from a background of uh, bicycle they are not even related to the aeronautics but they have got an interest and they have made the aircraft to fly on air they have several attempts and some of the aircrafts have crashed also but if this particular concept the flow visualization experimentation methods if it would be there in that particular stage if it was there in that particular stage they might design a scaled object of an air, aircraft and they can place it in the wind tunnel they can flow the uh, they can make the flow to pass over the particular object this is a kind of thing in original aircraft in the real thing the air the uh, aircraft is going to freeze the atmospheric air and it is going to go, going to uh, move from one place to other and in this particular thing the object the aircraft is going to be kept as a static and over which we are going to make some flows to uh, pass over it so that we can able to study the force is acting over it the moment is acting over it the mainly the pressure distribution every quantitative analysis we can do in the qualitative perspective of the view and we can able to tell at which flow pattern it goes we know about various flows uh, either the flow the flow passed over the aircraft is laminar or maybe turbulent so that kind of studies can also be done so that what they can able to do with that particular amount of uh, results they can modify their design and they can bring the smoothness over the particular aircraft and they can even more even before itself they can able to uh, succeed in their particular aircraft uh, things aircraft flying things so this is the thing so not only the aircraft any scaled models be it may be a building or it may be an engine where we want to do a flow analysis but where we want we want to know about the flow analysis we can be able to do with this particular flow visualization methods so wherever i am just telling about the aircraft the a civil engineer can uh, take about a scaled model of a building and a mechanical engineer can take about a uh, can and uh, imagine about an automobile it may be a car or maybe it may be a lorry a scaled model of it and that can be tested and that can be experimented and the visualization the with our naked eye itself we can able to visualize how much amount of flow is flow passed over that particular object that can also be done using this particular flow visualization method let's move on to the first topic so as i said i'm just going to recall what are the types of flows uh, as an engineer uh, we might uh, come across the fluid mechanics subject i'm just recalling that only Uh, we know about uh, various flows, and to, for today's topic, I'm just uh, recalling only so, the four types of flows. Sir, what are the ones? Sorry, disturb you. Is it in full screen? Why the full screen mode, sir? Is it yes, PPT mode? Yes, sir. Actually, sir, this is a jam board, so oh, where okay. I can highlight and. Uh, okay, no problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Anyway, simple like this. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. So today we are going to study about. Uh, sorry, see about uh, the steady flow. I'm just recalling it. so steady flow we should know where we are going to keep the uh, density or maybe the pressure as constant so for steady flow we can able to keep the pressure or maybe density that is any fluid flow property either we can go for the pressure or maybe go for the density to be constant 
and in unsteady that's vice versa the for the fluid velocity pressure or maybe density point will changes with respect to the time so this steady flow uh, is uh, capable for the uh, ideal fluids ideal flow fluids ideal regimes and unsteady flow it occurs when it go comes in the practical stream so uniform flow uh, uniform flow where the velocity is constant uh, it does not change with respect to the time and uh, over this uniform flow the steam lines will be parallel to each other and they does not uh, intersect with each other and in non uniform flow the velocity will changes from time to time so here the velocity is constant here we can take the pressure as constant we can consider the pressure as constant and uh, while well, comes to this one sorry while well, comes to the next uh, two flows uh, two main flows which is our laminar flow which is to be expected to to be the study for today the laminar flow and the turbulent flow as i said earlier the laminar flow the fluid particles will move in a well defined path the fluid particles will move in a well defined path that is called as a laminar flow that is mostly the steam lines will be parallel to each other they does not inter intersect with each other whereas in the turbulent flow the fluid moves in very irregular shape and due to the intersection of that particular uh, due to the inter intersection of the particular paths there will may be the formation of wake wake means the drag minute amount of drag will be created so that causes some disturbances in the real flows in the real flows and for today's topic we are going to study the flow visualization in two flows compressible flow and incompressible flow this is what we are going to expect that is the laminar flow and the turbulent flow what we are going to expect over the model that is a uh, over the model what we are going to achieve either the flow over the model is laminar flow or maybe turbulent flow and this one the compressible and incompressible flow what kind of flow we are going to send into the particular test section either it may be compressible flow or maybe incompressible flow and we know for the compressible flow the density of the fluid changes with respect to time and uh, for the incompressible flow the density uh, does not changes for incompressible flow, density does not change for the real flows we will go with the compressible flows only for the real flows we will go with the compressible flow only. so for a compressible flow at some subsonic or maybe supersonic state, supersonic mach number so subsonic mach number the mach number which is lesser than 1 or called a subsonic mach number the mach number which is greater than 1 and between the range of 1 to 2 are called as supersonic mach number in between these two regimes that is in low speed and at high speed we are going to send the compressible flows over the object and we are going to study which kind of flow is happening over it either the flow is laminar flow or maybe turbulent flow if the flow is laminar we can come to a conclusion that the flow line the flow passing over the object is steam line and is not does not create some wake so that the lift generation that is the upward force uh, whatever we are expecting will be good and the uh, if it is a turbulent there will be some formation of vortex and the wake formation so there will be some drag forces also so i am just uh, drawing an uh, image here uh for example if we going to keep a box like this we are going to keep a box like this and we are going to spend the sorry we are going to send the flow over it this particular flow will hit this particular box and it will moves in the upper and lower lines lower for paths so this upper uh, upper surface lines are called as upper steam line and this is the lower steam lines if these steam lines are moving without any intersection if the steam lines are moving without any intersection then that is called as laminar flow if the steam lines is intersect with each other and what it will do it will create some wake over it it creates some wake w a k -E. wake will be created this particular wake will generate some drag force will generate some drag force so what is drag force and the lift force i'm just telling you so which is nothing but for an aircraft we have some four forces acting over it four forces acting over it or an object or maybe over an aircraft we used to say four forces are there
the downward force the force which is acting normally downward due to the gravitational force is called as weight normally it is called as weight which is represented as w and the upward force which is opposing to the weight that is we want to lift our aircraft the aircraft will have some uh, more weight and we have to lift na so that is called as a lift force l it is which is generated as l our aim in uh, air, aircraft industry is not only to move in upward side we want to do the transportation that is we want to move from one place to the other so that forward force is called as thrust force so it is generated as t and uh, there will be some resistance offered by the fluid that is a air acting over the particular object that is over the aircraft that backward force that uh, resistive force is called as drag this is called as drag so in the particular flow visualization in this particular flow visualization we are going to study about these two forces that is the lift and drag forces we can able to study about the lift and drag forces so if the flow is laminar that is if the flow is laminar then the lift generation will be high if the flow is laminar then the lift generation will be high if the flow is turbulent then there will be chances of drag formation and the drag will be increased and it decreases the lift force so this is the particular thing why we want to go for the flow visualization so in next we are going to stay we are going to see about uh, sorry we want to see we are going to see about some four types of lines uh, in this uh, we already know about uh, steam line uh, during our uh, fluid mechanics or maybe during the particular subject we might study about that and uh, path line also so path line and steam line just go start with the known facts that is a path line and steam line then i will i will go for the steak and time lines so path line is uh, is a line which is a straight line which describes the uh, trajectory of the fluid flow that is uh, it gives the direction at but at which direction the object has been displaced the object has been displaced or maybe the particle has been displaced that is called as the path line it describe describe the trajectory of the given fluid particle so at time t equal to 0 where it was where, where it was and at time t equal to t1 that is at the final time where it was so at which direction it moves at in which direction it moves that was uh, that will be given by the path line i will go with the steam line then i will come for the steak line the steam line uh, is nothing but a imaginary line or maybe we used to call it a curve line which is drawn in such a manner that which connects the velocity points that is at a particular point the tangent at that particular point will gives the velocity value the tangent drawn to the particular point will gives the velocity value that is uh, at that point for example if uh, if this is the line we are just considering a point here in this point we can draw a tangent and this particular tangent will gives the uh, gives the values of the velocity so we can able to find out both the direction and magnitude so path line is a scalar quantity and steam line is a vector quantity both the things we can able to do and steak line so steak lines are the instantaneous of instantaneous point of locus of all the fluid elements that have passed over the point of injection at some earlier time for example uh, this particular steak line we are going to see in our smoke flow visualization where along with the air we are going to you know, we are going to introduce the smokes also for that particular smoke will hit over the particular objects whatever we have placed in the test section and it will flow over it and it creates some uh, visible flow patterns visible flow patterns that particular uh, point is called as a steak lens it connects each and every point it connects each and every locus point wherever the fluid flow is possible wherever the fluid flow is possible that is called as a steak line and the last line is the time line uh, the line which is generated to aid the understanding of the flow behavior so which is helps to understand the flow behavior of velocity and velocity gradient for example at time t what is the velocity and at, that is time t equal to 0 what is the velocity and at time t1 what is the velocity velocity and in between what is the velocity gradient so to study that we require the time rate so here 
during uh, our flow solution we are going to see about the steak lines and also we are going to see about the uh, steam lines steak and steam lines we are going to see in the particular flow solution method so this is the image of uh, those four lines so first is the time line so see the flow is going to hit this particular object so at time t where it is where how much it is displayed and at time t1 and at time t2 how much it is displayed so that display rate also that is a velocity gradient also we can able to get from this time lines and path line you just see here at the starting the fluid is here and the intermediate point and at the final point so it gives the direction at which direction the flow has been done and at which direction the flow has been done so this particular line gives only the direction this particular line will gives only the direction and the steak line so consider an object here so which is like a, a rocket cone that is a rocket nose so the flow is passed over it so this will hit this particular nose and it flows over the upper side under the lower side so what we said this particular flow this is for the air flow and over which we are going to introduce any foreign image foreign particles like we can introduce the smoke or we are we can able to introduce the dyes also or that is a, a tracer material materials also that will trace the each and every points of the that is a local location of the moving objects uh, location of the moving velocity molecules over the object at the upper and the lower surfaces that will gives the steak line and the steam line as i already said it will gives the if we draw a tangent to that particular point it will gives the velocity value that is a direction and the both direction magnitude value of the velocity can be studied with help of the steak line sorry steam lines so these two lines we are going to uh, clearly we can able to visualize uh, during the visualization we can study about the steak line and the steam lines okay so now we are entering into the today's topic uh which is a uh, flow visualization so can anyone can uh, ask us why flow visualization or maybe what is flow visualization so uh, i'm just sitting in my room at my uh, home we have the fan the fan is uh, just pushing down some amount of air also so only we are getting some quite ambience so do on my face some amount of air is moving but in the nak day i can't able to see at which direction it's coming and hitting me and in which direction it is moving so nothing we can able to do with the nak day eye for this particular thing but this can be possible if we follow some experimental methods so that is the beauty of the flow solution that is out of making flow patterns visible to the nak day the main thing is so we want to make the flow patterns visible to the nak day so the beauty of the thing is with the nak day itself we can able to visualize what is the flow pattern is happening over an object and the flow passed over it and it reduces the hindrance in understanding the motion of air molecules that is i said now at in which direction the molecule is coming and hitting you. that particular hindrances will not be there so we can able to we can able to know from which direction it is coming and which direction is moving over the object and how it is going to leave the object so entire clear picture of the visualization can be able to do with this particular flow visualization method and this particular flow visualization method can be used to do the both qualitative and quantitative analysis qualitative and qualitative analysis and especially in both subsonic and supersonic regions subsonic means the low speed and the supersonic means the high speed regions so the qualitative as i said we can able to visualize the flow and we can tell that how the uh, flow is the what is the kind of flow whether it is a laminar flow or maybe turbulent flow or what or how the steam lines uh, or maybe the steak lines moving over on a particular object so those kind of studies will be qualitative analysis in quantitative analysis we can able to uh, find out the pressure distribution the from the pressure diffusion we can go for the force for force finding that is a cl and cd and we can also able to find out the moments also so 
how these can be achieved with the help of some experimental methods with the help of some experimental methods so uh, we are fortunate now to have these kind of experimental methods because if i want to uh, design my own aircraft or maybe a part of an aircraft that is a wing wing structure i can able to design and i can place it over the wing tunnel uh, or, and i can give the flow visualization and i can get, with my nac day i can able to we can able to see what the flow pattern is happening over it but this is not the case for the right brothers so they want to uh, uh, if one thing is failure they want to start from the fresh they want to change the design and they want to do so it uh, it cause some time consumption and human loss also and energy loss also so this is a fortunate method and now uh, anyhow the software also came but still in ca- in case of the experimentation things because now the world is moving towards the 3d printing center so any kind of models can be 3d printed uh, that is can be this it can be scaled model and over which we can able to do this flow visualization methods and what is the need of flow visualization first thing to understand the flow phenomena why i want to understand the flow phenomena so as i already said at which velocity the flow is coming and hitting the object and uh, the other flow properties like pressure density and uh, either the flow is laminar or turbulent uh, those things we can able to study that is a, it is a, either the steam line is a, a laminar or maybe the turbulent flow all those things we can study and to verify the smoothness over the model if my object is smooth enough then the flow passed will be quick enough and i can able to get some uh, high amount of lift i can we can able to get some i am out of lift so only uh, in uh, you can, in recent automobiles in cars also the curves has been made in the side view if you want to look it up it will be merely like a aerofoil structure it uh, merely like a aerofoil structure this will be in this particular shape this is an aerofoil st- structure so mostly that is a, this is the aerodynamic structure we used to call so they will try to make the uh, outer body of the uh, uh, outer body of the car uh, merely equal to the aerodynamic structure so this is uh, this uh, this particular test we can do in experimental method by using the scale model testing also that is the flow visualization why we want to we need flow visualization and in order to get better results for designing and manufacturing in order to get some better results for designing and manufacturing so what we can do we can able to design we can able we can able to remodify these designs and if we, if i am not satisfied with the results we can go for further remodification and that particular designing we can if i am get the uh, expected outcome and uh, that can be go for manufacturing this is not the case before and uh, now we are using some softwares also but the software cost is more and also it takes a more amount of time and uh, it requires some specification of some laptops and pcs so if we have some wind tunnels there is a testing uh, method experimental uh, methods with us we can go for flow visualization rather than the particular softwares and uh, in uh, three kinds of methods we can use for the flow visualization uh, to view the flow visualization that is addition of the foreign material optical techniques and addition of heat and energy addition of heat and energy so here i'm just going to tell uh, how we are going to add the foreign material and optical flow solution and uh, this particular addition of heat and energy uh, we can do we can able to do but this is depend upon the particular objects uh, material so i am not going to test this today so what we are going to say is addition of foreign material that is how we can reduce the smoke how we can reduce the tuft with the particular testing and uh, optical techniques we have three types of optical methods uh, to test our uh, models so that also we are going to st- uh, see in today's session so move ahead before entering into the techniques i'm just uh, telling here so where it can be it can it can be applied because if we know the application then we can uh, uh, able to use it uh, everywhere no? 
so doing the design of cars aircraft ships submarines and spacecraft so you can see the vehicles here the cars the aircraft the ships the submarines or maybe the spacecraft so these particular uh, things we can uh, we can able to directly design uh, directly manufacture and directly go for the practical application it have some enormous amount of uh, amount involved uh, that is time also involved and uh, it also have some human human uh, uh, lives also so this particular vehicles uh, can should be flow visualized or maybe the flow session to be done over these particular vehicles before comes for the before goes for the manufacturing session and design of the components there is a turbine at which rate uh, the turbine can maximum operate the performance of the turbines can be verified here and also some combustion engines so flow inside the blood vessels in medical fields they used to see about the flow uh, inside the blood vessels also and the river and ocean flow this is uh, this study can also be done and the wind effects between the buildings we used to see about tell about the gust winds uh, the other wind wind flows also uh, in between the buildings so that particular wind blowings also can be studied for the scaled model of buildings placed in the test section so flow visualization techniques so till now we have uh, we have seen what is a flow uh, what is the types of flows we are we are going to expect and uh, next thing is uh, flow types of flow the types of fluid lines we have seen and uh, what is flow visualization why we need it and application everything we have studied now we are entering into the main concept what are the methods how we can able to do this flow visualization there are some methods are there and uh, let's see one by one so flow visualization what is flow visualization techniques in the, this particular technique is used to render flow elements visible the main aim is to make the flow elements visible to the nac day either by observing the motion of rd suitable foreign materials i used to say, uh, in before uh, slide i said na so adding a foreign material or through the optical methods or through the optical methods so we can able to visualize this particular visualize this particular flow elements either by adding a suitable foreign material to the flowing fluid or maybe using the optical methods in optical methods the study of the flu, the variation of the fluid flow can be studied with the help of the change in refractive index change in refractive index using the particular refractive index itself we can able to find the uh, variation of the fluid flow so these two methods are predominantly used for our flow visualization techniques one is the adding of suitable foreign materials with the flowing fluid and other is the optical methods so the first thing is first we are go, first two types we are going to see is our smoke flow visualization and the tuft flow visualization these two comes under the uh, method of introducing the foreign uh, particle method of introducing the foreign particle so not to explain it i am just uh, take few minutes to tell the basics so three things i have drawn here this is the fluid that is we said that the flowing fluid uh, this is air okay the fluid uh, we, there are three types of fluids that is uh, there are uh, liquid air and gases are called as fluids because it have the tendency to move from uh, one place to other so it have the tendency to flow over an object so here we are considering air as the fluid okay this is the injector <coughs> sorry
and this is the object object to be tested for the flow solution for which the flow solution to be so as we said the first method is introduction of the foreign particles over the flowing fluid this is the flowing fluid the air is the flowing fluid here we are going to add the smoke here we are going to add the smoke the fluid that is a air will comes here and uh, at this particular point both will mix together and the particular mixture will flow over the object and the particular mixture will flow over the object so with the nag day we can't able to see the air but so only what we are do we are inter introducing the foreign object that is a foreign material smoke inside the particular uh, tunnel testing equipment so the particular smoke mixes with the air and flows over the object and it will gives the clear image of the particular flow solution okay so uh, instead of the smoke we can able to we can uh, also add the uh, this one the tuft we can able to use the tuft which is also a foreign material and we can use the dyes in case of the fluid is water if the fluid is water we can able to use the dyes also so in our uh, fluid mechanics lab we used to study about the helicia apparatus where uh, the ink has been used to uh, along with the water so that we will study the flow pattern over the object so that is a kind of flow solution method there is a kind of dye penetrant flow solution method dye penetrant or maybe dye introduced flow solution method so let's go with the smoke flow solution it's a kind of foreign object inter introduced visualization method so here Uh, it can be done on smoke tunnel so where it can be done it can be done only on the smoke tunnel and uh, it should consist of a smoke generator so i will tell you two types of smoke generators are there so i will tell you uh, how that smoke can uh, smoke has been produced over it mm, so so what what it requires it requires the smoke tunnel and it can able to visualize only the speed up to 30 meter per second speed they are mentioning about the fluid flow so this particular sp the speed of the fluid should be less than uh, sorry up to 30 meter per second from 0 to 30 meter per second only it can able to uh, do the smoke flow solution because in uh, if the speed is increased beyond 30 the mixing of the smoke uh, along with the fluid that is along with the air will not be that much uh, that much perfect so that is the um, that particular blend, uh, blend of that particular mixture of air and smoke cannot be achieved and uh, the visualization will be very lean and uh, we can't uh, able to visualize it so it can able to it can be operated from 0 to 30 meter per second so why we are using this smoke flow visualization is in order to study about the boundary layer effects over the object and uh, to study about some air pollution problem and also to study about the exhaust system in locomotives cars and ships where we want to study about the mixing characteristics where we want to study the mixing characteristics of the exit of the nozzle or maybe mixing characteristics of uh, other fuel and injectors so all those things we can able to use this smoke flow solution methods so uh, i said none the smoke tunnels so this is that this is a smoke tunnel see here so this is some honeycomb structure and this is the flow direction so this is the flow direction and uh, we have a contraction section here and uh, paraffin oil container the oil has been there and dc power supply this is oil container that is a smoke generator and the, this is the test section and this is the test section of the wind tunnel this is the test section of the wind tunnel where we we are going to place the model where we are going to place the model and we, we are going to test the flow visualization and uh, it requires some dc supply in order to operate this oil container we it requires some dc supply so and uh, this is the weight for the plunk stainless steel so in order to operate this paraffin oil the level to check that particular level is it so this is the basic smoke tunnel so it is a common like a wind tunnel where we are going to introduce the smoke that's it where we are going to introduce the smoke and uh, at the entrance itself 
at the entrance itself we will have the honeycomb structures the foreign objects of the flow has been uh, reduced and the flow will be moved towards the test section with the high velocity that is the velocity from 0 to 30 meter per second and uh, that will be flows inside this particular test section so with the one should know about the size of the test section before going for the scaled models for example if my test section uh, uh, specification is 300 cross 300 cross 200 mm then for for that particular test section only we can able to we have to do the scaling of our model then only it can be placed inside the test section and uh, we can able to visualize the flow can able to visualize the flow right so we are going to use the smoke here we are going to use the smoke here we can't able to use any kind of smoke so it has it should have some qualities right so the qualities of smoke sir it should be white and dense the qualities of smoke are it should be white and dense it should be white in color so that with the nac day itself we can able to visualize the smoke and it should be dense so how much dense it should be means it should, the density of the particular smoke is nearly equal to the density of the air which is entering into that particular uh, object for the test section so uh, the air and the smoke itself it should have some nearly equal density so only it, it will be easily mixed and it will be flows over flowed over the test section and the flow, the smoke should not be poisonous and it should be non corrosive also because if it is corrosive it will corrode our uh, material there is a scaled object so that will causes some adverse effect for the next time of testing so it should be non poisonous and non corrosive and the smoke particle should not deposit inside the internal if it deposit inside the internal that is if we have some high dense smoke than the air so it will be deposited inside the internal and that causes some adverse effects and it causes some corrosion also so uh, it should be easily produced the production of the smoke should be easy and it should be quickly produced it should be quickly produced then because we are going to do the visualization not for a too much period of time only for the short period of time we are going to use the uh, visualization so and it should be easily controllable also the flow should be easily controllable so here i am just showing two generators i will go with the one by one first is smoke generator which is uh, called as wood smoke generator there are some other uh, chemical methods are also there but those chemical methods uh, are are uh, poisonous Uh, that is we said about some two qualities uh, it should be non poisonous non corrosive in that particular two things it, it is a it is a point up so we are going to use wood smoke generator and kerosene smoke generator here you can see in the wood smoke generator we have some wood shavings here we have some wood shavings here the air is passed through the wood shaving so this will be mixed and burner is there it will be heated and uh, this will goes into the funnel and it will be collected here at the tar and moisture remover and where that after the mixing a uh, mixture of uh, with the tar and moisture remover the smoke will be exited out this smoke has been taken and it will be introduced inside the smoke tunnel for the, our visualization so here we should use some good quality of woods uh, so that we can able to get some good quality of smoke uh if we are using some smoke which is uh, uh, which is wet we can be able to get some uh, good quality of uh, smoke also and uh, if some uh, this uh, the shape of wood shavings should be equal that is if it is uh, if it is circle or maybe if it is rectangle that particular shape uh, the the similar kind of shape to be used here in order to get the better performance and better burning rate of the wood shavings so like that uh, we can able to generate the uh, smoke using the wood smoke generator and the next is our uh, kerosene smoke generator here we are going to use the kerosene instead of the wood so the kerosene be taken in the conic uh, in the conical flask and it will be have some holder and uh, it have some uh, hard thick rubber tube 
because it will be heated here and uh, it will be heated with the high heat uh, high heater coil also and as per as ropes also will be placed and uh, kerosene will be mixed here so this particular kerosene will enter through this particular chamber and air will be mixed here so once the kerosene and air gets mixed that is in the at the mixer chamber it produces some smoke and that will be collected the glass jar and from the glass jar to the smoke rake the smoke will be sent so here we are, uh, first we will heat the kerosene and it will heat uh, we will pour the kerosene and it will flows towards this particular heater coil where it, the kerosene will be heated and will sent to the particular mixing chamber where the air will be sent and the kerosene and air will be mixed it produces some good quality of smoke that is a white dense smoke which will be collected at the glass jar and uh, after that it will be sent to the smoke rake and we can control this particular thing also so these two kind of methods sorry this two kinds of uh, smoke generation methods can be used to generate the uh, this uh, smoke so we can use either the wood or either the kerosene these two are some earlier methods and uh, nowadays we directly go for the optical flow isolation methods in order to get some better results but uh, as a thing i said now this is a overview of today's uh, uh, today's seminar so i'm just telling about these two also that is a wood smoke generator and kerosene smoke generator and next thing is tough to flow visualization this is also a uh, external object which is uh, introduced during the flow external object which is introduced in the flow so here uh, we are going to introduce some minute particles which is called a tuft uh inside the particular uh, tuft inside the tunnel uh, that is inside the smoke tunnel so the tuft which is nothing but uh, we used to say it, it may it might be the feather of the hen or maybe some collected uh, cotton particles or maybe it, it it may be a polyester so that can be placed over the surface of the model uh, with the help of the glue it will be attached to the surface of the model once the flow is flows over it once the flow flows over it so it will it will see how it is happening that is uh, how the flow is uh, happening over it and we can able to visualize the flow over it with the help of the movement of the tuft inside it movement of the tuft inside it so to capture the instantaneous flow pattern to capture the instantaneous flow pattern found by the tuft that is light and flexible tuft uh on the model surface i said na over the model surface the tuft has been placed uh, with the help of the glue and over the if the model has been placed in such a section the flow will be passed over it with the help of that flow passed over it we can able to see how much amount of uh, so what is the steam in, uh, acting over it and we can able to visualize the flow pattern over it and the orientation of the tufts with respect to the free steam flow the orientation of the tufts with respect to the free steam flow clearly indicates the features like flow separation reattachment region or maybe recirculation region so all these three things can be known from the orientation of the tuft itself for example uh, if the tuft is like this before sorry if the tuft is placed like this over the object so if the flow is passed over it may be the high speed flows because here we can go up to 150 meter per second so after this is before uh, movement of our air molecule this is one and after the movement the orientation of the tuft is like this we can able to see the steam lines also using this orientation that's what they have mentioned here the orientation of the tuft by viewing the orientation of the tuft itself we can clearly indicate what where is the flow separation happens at the part for the particular object where the flow separation occur and uh, where the reattachment and recirculation regions also occurs so the as i said the tuft normally we use the polyester or maybe cotton sewing threads as a tuft okay and uh, it can be visualized up to the range of 40 to 150 meter per second we can able to introduce the tuft flow visualization the tuft may be coated with the fluorescent dyes 
for example if the cotton is white color we can uh, we can uh, use some fluorescent dyes and after that we can go for the gluing purpose and uh, which increases the visibility for photography which increases the visibility for the photography the tuft are attached to the surface of the model with the help of tape and glue okay with the help of some cellotypes or maybe with the help of some glues we can able to place that particular model the tuft indicates the regions of unsteady flow because the flow separation after the flow separation the flow becomes unsteady and at the recirculation also there will be rotational flow that is a formation of wake will be there the unsteady flow will occur it can be recorded with the help of film or maybe using the videos the tuft are very cheap to produce although they require some time to apply over the model because we can collect some more tuft also but placing it at the uh, correct orientation and getting the flow situation proper flow situation it takes some more time the tuft flow visualization can be done to determine the boundary layer the wake flow the flow separation and stall spread seed uh, stall uh, sorry stall spreads etc so the uh, in order to study the boundary layer separation wake flow form formations that is a uh, flow separation and uh, flow recirculation and uh, uh, rotational flow studies and the wake formation we can use this tuft flow methods this is the image of the tuft which has been got from csir labs so you can see see enormous amounts of tuft has been placed and uh, this has been given as yellow color here also you can see it has been given as a red color a red penetrance they have used so when this particular car is just moving the with the help of the movement the orient the change in orient the tuft itself we can tell which kind of flow is opening uh, happening over it and that the flow separation occurs this is at the uh, real thing if it is placed inside the model we can get some minute and accurate results also if it is placed inside the test section of the internal we can get some minute and accurate results so the smoke method and tuft method these two are uh, the uh, foreign or uh, maybe the foreign objects introduced methods and uh, next we are going to study about the optical flow solution method optical flow solution method in the optical flow solution from the name itself we can know we are going to use the light light source we are going to use the mirrors we are going to use the splitters we are going to use the screens to record the images uh, so whatever we have studied in the physics so that is the optical flow solution method so how effectively this optical flow solution can be used uh, that is the main thing okay so we have three methods of flow solution that is optical flow solution one is interferometer next is clearan and the third is shadow graph so interferometer clearan and shadow graph so these three methods we are uh, we are going to study for the high speed flows we are, we are going to study for the high speed flows uh, you can recall for the smoke we, we can able to uh, use only up to the uh, 40 meter per second and from the tuft we can use for 40 to 150 meter per second but in real world in real world uh, our objects has been move in higher speeds only so at the supersonic regimes we can go for interferometer testing that is optical flow solution test uh, testing where we can able to find out the uh, density variations with the help of the refractive indexes with the help of the refractive indexes okay first we will start with the interferometer this is the basic setup the basic interferometer setup as we said there will be a light source lens 1 lens 2 screen mirrors and the test section so inside the test section we are going to place the model to be visualized to for the flows visualized for the high speed flows so Uh, for, from the light source the light will be uh, emerges out and will impinge over the lens l1 from the lens l1 it will create some parallel beams one particular one sort of beam will passes through the uh, mirror one and it moves towards the mirror three and moves towards the mirror three this is one uh, this is a beam one one sort of beam 
and this is another set of beam another set of rays this particular beam uh, this particular ray which is uh, reflected towards the mirror to and it uh, pass over the uh, test section and it impinges the l2 that is a lens 2 and it goes for the screen and uh, this one from m1 to m3 this particular ray will hit the mirror 3 and goes for the mirror 4 and it will uh, meet the l2 where the two flows will be mixed and uh, will be get in the screen so one flow is place is viewing the particular uh, object which is placed in the test section and other flow which is not disturbed with the particular test section flow so what it will go what it will give so two kinds of rays are there two kinds of beams are there these two beams one beam is passing over the object and other beam which is does not passing over the object which is mixed and will get a photographic image at the screen photographic image at the screen uh, that is the fringe patterns we will get with the able with the fringe pattern steady we can tell at uh, at what rate or uh, maybe at what rate our uh, steam lines are uh, steam lines are there over the model so that can be studied easily by uh, seeing about the screen by seeing about the images of the screen and this particular method is used to do the qualitative determination of density so in interferometer we can directly study the density there is a quality determination of density for the high speed flows can be achieved that is for the compressible flows at high speeds so quality determination can be able to be done and as i said the light from the source is collimated to the lens l1 and it will pass through the mirror one uh, that is this particular image only uh, mirror one and from mirror one one beam has been sent to the mirror two and it will pass through the test section and it hits the object and it will move to the mirror four and lens l2 and after that screen and other beam it goes to the mirror three and mirror four that is a this is disturbed beam this is undisturbed beam which is mixed at l2 and gives uh, and impinges over the screen and it forms the fringe pattern and uh, the fringe patterns will be dark and white with the particular fringe patterns we can able to visualize which kind of flow it is so when the absence of the flow that is the flow is not there both the beams gives same pattern of illumination on the screen that is dark means dark white uh, uh, dark means dark white means white but when the flow is on various shades of patterns will be made up on the screen and the flow is on various pattern of uh, flows will be uh, made up on the screen so various flows means uh, that is uh, when the object is placed and the various flows has been moved that is at the high speed for depending upon the flow rate it will form some various fringe patterns and the dark and white frames will be formed and that shades of pattern using the shades of pattern from the screen we can visualize the flows we can able to visualize the flows uh, one second and i will go for the next slide okay the next is our sclerene photography method so in the sclerene photography method the same thing same light lens mirror and screen the same will be used so the light source will fall over the lens one and uh, it flows the it will make some parallel beams and flows over the test section and uh, lens l2 will be there and uh, the main thing is we will have some knife edge in order to adjust the flow patterns that is the flow pattern formed over the screen that in the over the photographic plate or maybe the screen okay so the same method will be there uh, but instead of that for two rays the two uh, that is a ray beam 1 and beam 2 which is disturbed and which is undisturbed here both the rays is directly passed over the test section where the object is going to be placed and we have some glass walls also so it will directly goes and impinges and uh, it 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 goes to the lens l2 and uh, from the lens l2 it will goes to the screen but a knife edge follower has been placed and it will adjust the if we adjust the knife edge follower we get some clear image clear flow patterns over this particular photographic plate clear images over this particular photographic plate so in this clearance method it is a visual it is a 
visual process used to photograph the flow of, flow of the fluids and to study the density gradient. In the particular uh, interferometer, we have studied about the density. Here we can able to study the density gradient. That is the first order derivative of density can be studied with the help of this clearance method. And uh, the light rays from the light source, so that is uh, what I said for the particular image. So the light light rays has been uh, light source has been passed over the lens one, and it passed to the test section with the help of the parallel beams and uh, lens two, and it produces some image. Uh, so the knife edge is used to get the clear image. But we can adjust the knife edge, and uh, we can capture the images, and uh, that images can be tested for the flow patterns. And the third thing is we are going to use the shadow graph method. Here, a point light source will be used. The, so the point light source will again create the uh, parallel beam and it flows over the chest section and it directly passes to the photographic plate and it directly passes to the photographic plate. So it does not uh, have some any uh, knife edge followers and all. Uh, and it directly captures the images and these flow patterns will be uh, formed over this particular uh, plate, particular screen plate. So the main uh, difference of uh, sclerian shadow graph is here in this shadow graph method, we can able to study about the second order density. That is the dou, dou square rho by dou t square can be studied. That is the second order derivative of density can be uh, with respect to time can be studied. Uh, and in uh, sclerian, as I already said, first order derivative can only be studied. And uh, this particular shadow graph method is simpler than the uh, sclerian method because we, do, we does not require any knife edge followers to get the clear images. Uh, so this can be simpler to operate and simpler to set up also. And we can get some good quality of images using the shadow graph method. So th that is also the another, uh, uh, another epic point uh, to use this shadow graph method. So uh, also we can get the second order density of a uh, second order term of density. So these methods, out of these three methods, that is an interferometer, uh, sclerian, and shadow graph. The shadow graph method is, seems to be very good uh, because it can produce some. Uh, it is a simpler method. That is first one. It can be able to study about the second order de derivative of density. That's the second point. And the third point, it can give some clear images. It can give some clear images. And uh, the refractive index, uh, the variation of the refractive index for the models. That is, if the flow is happening over it. So during that particular flow, okay, the refractive indices can uh, will vary fastly. That can that that much fast we can able to get some clear images. So that is uh, another peculiar peculiarity of this shadow graph method. So out of these three methods, that is a shadow graph, uh, interferometer, clear and shadow graph method. The shadow graph methods are widely used, and uh, this can, this will be effective method also since it have some these kind of peculiar things. So with this uh, shadow graph method, I'm just concluding my session. So today uh, I want to give some overview about the flow isolation method. So we have started with the types of fluids, uh, sorry, types of flows, and in that particular types of flows, we are mainly concentrating about the laminar and turbulent flows where we are going to study about some steam lines and the uh, streak lines uh, next. And uh, we started to study about why we require the flow visualization because with the NAC day, we can't uh, able to see about the flows. We can't able to see about the flows. So we require the steam lines. We require the steam lines to be, we require the flow visualization. And uh, this flow visualization uh, should be effectively used uh, can be effectively used to conduct some experiments also to conduct some experiments also uh, so these are the things and uh, this particular flow isolation have some uh, two methods one is introduction of the foreign opticals foreign objects that is the smoke under the smoke under the uh, tuft that is a two methods we can uh, use in this particular thing that is uh, in the particular uh, flow isolation method and finally, and finally, we can also uh, use the optical methods, which is uh, widely used things now. So, using the particular optical flow isolation methods, 
uh, we can able to uh, we can able to visualize the density gradients that is uh, first order den direct density in the using the interferometer interferometer the first order derivative of density using the sclerian method and using the uh, shadow graph we can get the second order density of uh, density gradient uh, so the shadow graph method is uh, widely used in order to get use the uh, study the fringe patterns and uh, that has been used for our spacecrafts and also for the aircraft studies also and with this note uh, i i would like to thank uh, ia uh, ia institution of engineers india trichy local chapter for giving me an opportunity to uh, tell my views about the flow visualization techniques and i also want to thank uh, somdas sir for uh, inviting me to give this particular lecture and other uh, dignitaries of uh, iea uh, trichy local chapter and i also thank uh, uh, dr uh, nr ramachandran sir uh, nrc sir who only introduced me to iea uh, he was no more with us and uh, i want to recall the memories uh, where he introduced the uh, tanjore local chapter local chapter then only i have uh, applied for the membership and i also want to thank our uh, tanjore local chapter chairman sumadhi ma'am and uh, honorary treasurer also for giving me an opportunity and also i want to thank my management team is management for giving me an opportunity to do, do some uh, experiments over there and we are uh, doing some jet flow visualization setup and uh, we have uh, a advanced jet flow visualization setup and maybe uh, in the next 6 uh, months we could be able to i can able to show some results of that particular advanced jet flow visualization methods and uh, some results of it also some mixing characteristics we are going to study and uh, hopefully uh, we will present that in the in some upcoming few, in near future and thanks for the opportunity given thank you samdas sir ha uh, thank you mr mudra ma it is a good uh, education for all of us now i request our uh, chairman to indicate the next week's program thank you sir it was a very good presentation sir you got the basics of everything of flow visualization really it was a wonderful thing sometime back in uh, you know one of our department uh, th- it is coming under cfd sir or some other thing is one this one whatever you talked uh, yes sir uh, now we have some softwares like cfd and all sir but in the earlier stages uh, we don't have that much uh, cfd techniques at all so we went for the flow visualization now also for experimental methods we use this particular flow visualization only sir because uh, in dhl uh, uh, department uh, abc hrc department we had a cfd team yes, there sir, we yes, had sir. a seminar also on today seminar also we had in cfd sometime back yes sir yes sir Uh, that is for the analytical part sir this is for the experimental part oh <laughs> that's right, the thank difference right now there is a difference okay thank you yes sir now it was a very good pr- uh, presentation sir thank you we enjoyed we enjoyed over thank you thank you sir pleasure is mine thank you sir any other clarification so mr mitra man good evening good evening sir uh, do you have any small wind tower in your uh, institute Yes, sir. We have a low-speed wind tunnel which can uh, able to operate about uh, 35 meters per second, and uh, we have a smoke flow setup also, uh, where the uh, our students are studying about the smoke flow visualization, sir. Okay. Assuming we have a scale, scale the model where which you yes, are testing inside the wind tunnel. Okay, sir. And collect the data. Okay. Suppose uh, I am sure that you will be having some simulation technique also, simulation packages. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have. How these two results? Uh, 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 coincide. Is there a correlation between these two? Yes, sir. We can correlate, but uh, in, in the low speed studies, uh, we can't able to do, sir. But for the high speed studies, we can able to correlate because we can get the density gradients. Uh, from that, uh, we can go for our flow property studies of pressure and velocity, and those values can be compared with the our uh, analytical sources like CFD, sir. Okay, only for uh, high speed applications, uh, high speed studies, we can use simulation techniques and low speed. Necessarily, we have to go for wind tunnel method. Huh? Uh, no, sir, we can go because uh, in our setup, I'm just telling. In our setup, we can able to do only the visualization. That is in our lab, but okay. uh, we can able to adapt, uh, or maybe we can uh, uh, apply some sensors over the particular model, and we can get that direct gradients, and that can be studied, or uh, that is that can be compared with those CFD set, uh, setups. that can also be done okay then thank you 
thank you sir in the mutraman the person yes, who interacted with you is dr dharmalingam retired general manager from bhl and is oh, one of the past chairman of uh, trichy local center and that's nice to speak with you thank you thank you dharmalingam sir thank for you, your thank you sir thank you sir. of course we earlier we visited the wind tunnel which is available at trivandrum okay sir in fact at some point of time maybe about 20 years back we wanted to enter ah. the supply of wind tunnel okay sir uh, of course we collected a lot of data also okay sir okay sir some at that point of time the uh, hmm. orders in the other sector the specifically in the thermal power plant sector was huge okay okay sir then we we did not uh, pursue further in that so we collected a lot of data with respect to the wind tunnel ah. we visited trivandrum and uh, saw the wind tunnel facility available there with a lot of okay. advanced instrumentation Okay, okay okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you for your excellent uh, lecture Th- thank you so much sir thank you so next week uh, i uh, institution of engineers tiruchirappalli local center arranged lecture on supply chain management and the smart factory strategies speaker is dr parasuram balasubramanya founder and ceo team work analytics private limited bangalore so request the fellow engineers to participate and be benefited this is in association with the computer institute of india indian shop builders indian shop building all are joining sir uh, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, other indian shop building uh, the indian welding society zone society south southern zone yeah. all are joining this so from the nid tiruchirappalli also few mtech students will participate okay sir welcome Thank now you. i request our chairman uh, mr dr kumarasan to propose what of thing sir please yeah thank you i guess uh, secretary is available anand we don't see anand no 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 he is not available he is not okay. there not okay there. so thank you Uh, for um, uh, engineer mutraman for your wonderful presentation and uh, kindly consented to deliver the lecture to the institution of engineers tiruchirappalli local center and also my thanks to the past and uh, present i mean uh, secretary and uh, chair persons of the institution of engineers for participating in this program also i thank to my colleagues who are all participated this Uh, lecture program thank you anand thank, thank you sir thank you thank you mr thank you thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you yeah. thank you sir yeah thank you so we can formally close the meeting thank you sir thank you sir madam we can close it okay okay